Welcome back. Hanna Niga, out in here's Algebra 2. We're going to do 1.4 AC. Remember, AC means alternative content. So that means we're going off the book here uh, today. So a system of equations, this is going back to your Algebra 1 days. System of equation is two or more equations with the same variables. Um, you can have three equations with three unknowns. We're going to today deal with just two equations with two unknowns. So we're talking about linear right now. A system of linear equations can be either one solution, no solution, or infinitely many solutions. So what does that mean? If I have one solution, you're talking about two lines that cross at one point. So think about two lines. They cross the intersection. That point, whatever that x and y coordinate is, is the solution to the system. Now, what happens if the two lines are parallel? Then you're going to say no solution. So two par don't put just parallel lines. Say actually there is no solution. What happens if I have two lines that end up actually being the exact same line? Okay, so then you would say infinitely many solution. I will let you abbreviate that to IMS. So infinitely many solutions. Okay. I gotta let you abbreviate no solution to a circle with a line through. So we're going to graph two equations. So I need to solve this for y. So I'm going to subtract x and divide by a negative 1. So the first line is y equals x minus 5. So I'm going over here to graph it. Negative 5 with a slope of 1. Next one, I'm going to subtract x and divide everything by 2. So this one, I'm going to choose a different color here, slope crosses at negative 2 with a slope of negative a half. So I see these two lines crossing and the point at which they cross is the solution. So they cross at the point 2, negative 3. So two lines that cross at one point, the intersection or the point of intersection is the answer. Next one, I'm going to graph the top one, so I'm going to solve it for y. So cross is a negative two, 0, negative 2 with a slope of negative 3. I'm going to graph the first line. Next one, I'm going to subtract 6x from both sides and divide everything by 2. Well, I notice that it has the exact same slope but a different y-intercept. So these two lines are parallel to each other, so we would write no solution. Let's use a graphing calculator to do this. Instead of doing it by hand. Now, this is, this is not a very nice question. Anytime you're using a graphing calculator, you need to solve it for y. So that is the first thing that you're going to need to do is you're going to need to solve this equation for y. So let's deal with the top one. I don't like fractions right now. All right, I don't want a fraction. So I'm going to multiply everything in the top equation by 6. Why did I pick 6? Because it's the common denominator. So if I multiply the first one by 6, I get 4x. If I multiply the second one by 6, I get 9y. And if I multiply the 4 by 6, I get 24. So now this is a much easier question to deal with because I don't have any fractions anymore. So multiplying everything by the common denominator allows me to get rid of all fractions. So now, solve this for y. Negative 4x plus 24 and divide everything by 9. And I'm going to go ahead and reduce that, so I'm going to get 8 thirds. So there is my first equation that I'm going to need. Second one, again, I'm going to multiply by 6. That's a coincidence, by the way. So I'm going to get negative 2x, uh, 6y, and negative 12. So 6y equals 2x minus 12. Divide everything by 6 y equals one-third x minus two. So here's my second equation. I want to graph these. I'm going to move to a graphing calculator. Now there's some house cleaning that I want to teach you guys here um, when dealing with a graphing calculator that you should know 
every time you turn on your graph and calculator and want to use it, there's a couple of steps that I want to make sure you understand. So here's my graph and calculator. I turned it on, and it probably looks something, it's clear. Okay, everything's blank. Go to your Y equals button and see if there's anything there. And if there is, let's say there's an equation sitting here or something, or your plots are on up top. If you used your graphic calculator the day before, you might see something like this. Hit clear on all your equations. So just go arrow down and hit clear. And then arrow up to what's highlighted and hit enter and then arrow back down. So nothing should be highlighted. Next, sometimes again, as you're using your graphing calculator, your window changes. So hit second, I'm sorry, hit zoom. Anytime you hit zoom, six, it says zoom standard, number six down here, that will make a standard looking graph. So a 10 by 10 graph. All right, so now let's go back to y equals and type in the two equations that we got, we had y equals 4 negative 4 ninths x negative 4 ninths x x is located up here by the green alpha button plus 8 thirds and then hit enter that now let's do the second equation 1 third x minus 2 and we're going to hit graph so there's the first line And here's the second line. So now, I see that they're crossing. So I know there's going to be one point, one point of intersection here. The question is, where is that point? I want to know that intersection point. So I'm going to hit second, trace. And I'm going to do number five. Number five says intersection. So I'm going to hit number five. And it's going to ask you three questions of which all of them are enter. If you had a bunch of lines, then this would make more sense. But I only have the two. So when it says first curve, enter. Second curve, enter. Do you want to guess? Again, I don't want to guess because ultimately this is I want it to calculate this. So hit enter again. The intersection is at the point six zero. So without using a without using a graph. I was able to use the calculator and answer this question. The answer to this question is an intersection at the point six zero. Now there's other methods other than graphing. Graphing is one method and it's not the method I would use first. But if I was using a graphing calculator or everything is y equals, then yes, the graphing calculator would be helpful. Now, the other two methods that you know are what's called substitution and elimination. Substitution is merely taking one equation, solving it for a variable, and plugging it into the other. Elimination is taking the two equations and adding them together and eliminating a variable. So let's do substitution first. Substitution is not my favorite. But solve one of the equation for one of the variables. It does not matter which one you choose. Now, there's some common sense that has to come in play here. I would choose y in the first equation because it is the only variable that has no coefficient, meaning there is nothing in front of the y value. So that makes it the easiest one to solve for. Now, I took the information from the first equation and I'm going to now substitute that information into the second equation. So notice that I rewrote the second equation, and instead of writing a y, I put negative 2x minus 5. Now, solve this like you would any Algebra 1 question. You would distribute, add like terms, and solve x would equal negative 1. You're not done yet. You do know what x is. A lot of people stop right here because they think they are done. They are not done. This equation has an x and a y, so it needs an x and a y answer. Go back up and put your x answer in. y would equal negative 2 times negative 1 plus 5. 
So y would equal negative 3. This means you have a point of intersection at negative 1, negative 3. If I were to graph this using a graphing calculator, I would get these two lines to cross at the point negative 1, negative 3. So that is substitution. Take one equation, solve it for a variable, and substitute into the other. Now let's talk about elimination. Elimination, you need opposites. Opposites mean positive 2x and negative 2x, or positive 8y and negative 8y. Okay, in this case, we're using m and n. So I need opposites. Well, currently, I do not have any opposites. So what one of the algebraic situations is you can multiply any equation by any number as long as you multiply everything in the equation. So I'm going to multiply the top equation by 2. Now, here's where a lot of people will mess up because they'll forget to multiply everything in the top equation by 2. I'm going to multiply the bottom equation by 3. What this allows me to do is to create opposites. Negative 6m and positive 6m cancel. They are opposites. Add everything that is left and solve. Again, I'm not done. This initial problem had an M and an N. I have the answer to M. Go back up here and in either equation, doesn't matter, put 3. So 5 times 3 minus 2N equals 11. And solve. That's an N. And subtract 15, I get negative 26. M would equal 13. So N, not M. Sorry about that. N would equal 13. And I'm back. I made a mistake, and I don't know how many people caught it, so hold on a second. So 15 minus 2N equal, equals 11. So when I subtract 15, I get negative 4. I apologize for that. N would equal 2. So again, fixing that. So M is 3. N is 2. Now, some of you would say, well, I thought you told me to write them as points. I would. Usually, it's always going to be an X and a Y. If it's two different letters, you do it in alphabetical order. So this is an M and an N. Your choice. You could, you could either use substitution, solve the top one for X, or use elimination and probably multiply one of the equations to create an opposite. I am an elimination person. So I'm going to multiply the top by negative 3. So notice that I multiplied everything in the top by negative 3, or the first equation by negative 3, which created an opposite. Now, this is not very friendly. I'm just double-checking myself to make sure that I didn't make a mistake here. So divide by negative 4, y would equal 7 fourths. So now I'm going to put 7 fourths back in. So x plus 3 times 7 fourths. x plus 21 fourths. Subtract 21 fourths. And get negative 5 fourths. So again, making this into a point, negative 5 fourths for x, 7 fourths for y. All right, now, if this situation, I probably would use substitution. I know I said earlier that I'm more of an elimination person, but if one of the equations is already solved for a variable, then I will substitute. So instead of the y, I'm going to put negative 3x plus 4. Uh-oh. So I have a 3x, a negative 3x, a 4 equaling a 4. These two cancel. Anytime the variable is gone, and we talked about this in the... Um, first chapter, the pre-chapter. Anytime the variable is gone, you're either going to have no solution or infinitely many solutions. Because 4 does actually equal 4, then this would be an infinitely many solutions. Okay? So what we'll be looking at, these two are the same line. 
Word problem. Now, word problems can be a little bit more complicated. You're going to have to make the equations up yourself. So at tennis practice, there are 38 girls playing tennis. Some are playing doubles and some are playing singles. There are 13 matches in progress. A doubles match requires four people. A single match requires two people. How many matches of each kind are in progress? So now, 4x, so these are double, we'll say x is for the doubles. X is for the doubles and y is for the singles. So 4x plus 2y. So 4 for every doubles match and 2 for every singles match and there's 38 people playing. Now there's x plus y equals 13 because there's 13 total matches. Now that I have my two equations, my two unknowns, now we're going to solve this using either substitution or elimination. I'm going to do elimination because that's what I prefer. So I'm going to multiply the bottom equation by negative 2. So negative 2x, negative 2y, negative 26. I'm going to leave the top equation alone. That eliminates the y. And solve. So there are six doubles matches occurring. So if there are six doubles, then I plug 6 back in. 6 plus y equals 13. And so there's 7 singles. Your homework assignment tonight is going to end up being a worksheet. Uh, if you have any questions, make sure you talk to your teacher, and good luck.